and driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, the way of the ungodly shall perish. Jesus come to show us how to live in this new kingdom of God. Matthew records him teaching his disciples in the mountain. Matthew chapter 5, beginning at verse number 3, the Bible, the Word of God says, Blessed are the Blessed are the poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn. For they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek. For they shall inherit the earth. And blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. For they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice. Rejoice, he says. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven are so persecuted they the prophets which were before you now let's open up your bibles to the book of hebrews the 10th chapter and the verse is 19 and 20. The word of the Lord says, Therefore, brothers, since we have boldness to enter the sanctuary through the blood of Jesus by the new and living way that he has inaugurated for us through the curtain that is his flesh. Monday, March the 9th, 2020, our daily devotion entitled reverence our generation lacks a sense of wonder and reverence toward god we want to bring god down to our level to the commonplace of our everyday life. He's God. Though we have direct access to him as his children, we ought never to forget that this access 
was purchased with the precious blood of his only son, Jesus Christ. No one who truly understands this ever enters God's presence without a sense of holy awe. No one who comprehends the incredible price paid at Calvary ever takes his relationship with God for granted. We will never truly understand God and the way he relates to us unless we first comprehend a true sense of his holy presence and holiness and his demand for holiness among his people. If we are, a, are in God's presence, we are we are on holy ground. We must never act as if it were God's purpose to make us successful. It would be preposterous for us to become impatient when God does not answer our prayers when and how we think he should. Why? Because he is God and we are not. As you, as you meditate on the price Jesus paid to give you access to the Father, you will come to treasure your prayer time with him. Worship will become a privilege you seize with gratitude. Scripture will be dear to you as you strive to be holy in all that you do. Second Corinthians chapter seven and verse number one and first Peter one fifteen says in first Peter, but as the one who called you is holy, you also are in are to be holy in all of your conduct. If if you have, if you have lost your wonder at the incredible gift of salvation that has been given to you, you need to, you need to revisit the cross and witness your Savior suffering for you. How priceless God's gift of salvation is for the whole world. And so is the reading from the books of the Lord, the book of Psalms, the first division, the book of Matthew chapter five, verse three through 12. And here in the book of Hebrews chapter 10, and verse 19 and 20. Now, let's open up our Bibles to our featured study found in the book of Hebrews. The 12th chapter. And the beginning at the verse 
Number five, the Bible, the word of God said, and you have forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons. My son, do not take the Lord's discipline lightly. Our faint when you are reproved by him. For the Lord disciplines the ones he loves and punishes every son he receives. Endure suffering as discipline. God is dealing with you as sons for what son is there that a father does not discipline but if you are without discipline which all receive then you are illegitimate children and not sons Furthermore, we had natural father discipline us and we respected them. Should we submit even more to the father of spirits and live? For they discipline us for a short time based on what seemed good to them, but he does it for our benefit so that we can share his holiness. No discipline seems enjoyable at the time but painful later on. However, it yields the fruit of peace and righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Therefore, strengthen your hand and weaken the knee and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be dislocated but healed instead. God disciplines believers. He chastens, corrects, and rebukes believers that we must always remember this. God cannot be tempted with evil neither tempted he any man. God does not cause temptation. He does not cause us to sin. He does not bring us into destructions. He does not cause the accidents. God cannot be tempted with evil. Because there's no evil in God. When we face some trials and sin in life, God stirs us to stand fast and to conquer the trial or to turn away 
from the sin. He guides us, directs us, he teaches us, trains us, and instructs us all along the way making us stronger and stronger in life and drawing us closer and closer to himself. God does not want you. He does not want the trials and the sins of life to defeat you and engulf your life. He wants them to be strength, amen, for us. He wants to use them to discipline and teach us more and more about endurance and wants to teach us to trust, amen, and depend more and more upon him. For well, he declares, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for your doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. My brothers and sisters, the God of heaven, he wants you and me to realize he has a place for all of us. And so the word, he uses the word, first, do not despise discipline. The word means to scorn to make little of, or treat lightly. You ever, you ever see people get a little, little old boys, get a, a whooping, and they get the chest out, they ain't bothering me. But let me tell you something, when God chasing us, it all, it all bother us. When your parents discipline, you ought, to, you ought to not despise it. You ought not make light of it. You ought not be treating it too lightly. Too often we pay little attention to the discipline and correction of God, to the amen, to the tug and the pull of the spirit of God, to the little consequences and sufferings of our hearts till we spend too little uh, time thinking about uh, what is God trying to teach me? What in me is he trying to correct? Uh, what is in me that he's trying to help us, to discipline us? My brothers and sisters, the point is this, we are not to despise the discipline of God, not to scorn it, nor take and think, treat it too lightly. In Second Chronicles, the scripture declares in uh, chapter 24 and verse 19, yet he, sent prophets to them to bring them again unto the Lord and they testified against them. But listen to what he said, but they would not give ear to the prophets. Jeremiah, the prophet declared in Jeremiah 32 and verse 33, he says, and they have turned unto, turned uh, unto me the back and not the face though I taught them raising up er, rising up early and teaching them yet they have not 
hearkened to receive instruction. Isaiah the prophet declared in Isaiah 9 and verse 13, for the people turneth not unto him that smiteth him, neither do they seek the Lord of hosts. You know what Jeremiah and, and Isaiah was talking about? You know, you ever heard, you ever be trying to discipline your children, they turn their back on you. You ain't, got, you ain't got nothing to say to me. Well, I'm going to tell you something. When God's speaking, you, you better listen. Jeremiah goes on to say in Jeremiah 2.30, In vain have I smitten your children. They receive no correction. Your own word, your own sword uh, have devoured your prophets like a destroying lion. Jeremiah goes on to say in Jeremiah 5, 3, O Lord, are not thine eyes upon the truth? Thou hast stricken them, but they have not grieved. Thou hast consumed them, but they have not refused to receive correction. They have made their faces harder than a rock. They have refused to return. My brothers and sisters, do not faint or give up when discipline comes upon you. That's what that's what verse 5 is saying. And he says, and you have forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons. My sons, do not take the Lord's discipline lightly or faint when you receive reproving from him. My brothers and sisters, and you have completely forgotten the divine word. This is what the Amplified Version says. You have completely forgotten the divine word of appeal and encouragement in which you are reasoned with with and and addressed as son my son do not think lightly or scorn to submit to the correction and discipline of the lord nor lose courage and give up and faint that is you quit i ain't going back no more Nobody's going to do anything to me because I'm grown. I want you all to know one thing. God has instructed the preacher and the elders to provide his instruction and discipline to the children of God. My brothers and sisters, Take it not lightly when a, when a preacher or an elder disciplines you and corrects you from the route that you are going. And that's why it's so important that you don't rebuke the hand of God that convicts you to repent and to correct our behavior becomes almost unbearable. My brothers and sisters, it is high time that we bring about the instruction of the Lord. 
we have become weary of doing what the Lord wants us to do. Brothers and sisters, it is high time that we understand that God loves us and he is doing his best to help us to understand the rebuke of the Lord. Isaiah the prophet declared in Isaiah 43 and verse 1 and 2. He says, but now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest, through the fire thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. God wants us to know that he is with us. He will be with us, and he shall supply our every need. Yes, the chastening, amen, he says, and you have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Brothers and sisters, don't give up. Don't give up. The Lord is with you. <laughs> he says, I formed you. I redeemed you. And I call you by your name. He's know your name. So when you, when you go through the fire, he says the fire won't bother you. And neither will a flame kindle upon you. You can, you can make it, children. That's what he, that's what he, that's what he wants you to know. He says, I'll be with you. When you pass through the waters, the waters won't. I know, uh, amen. Uh, you know, we hear so much about waterboarding today. God says the waterboard, the waterboarding, it won't bother you. Amen. It won't bother you. Because I'm with you. We'll finish up these verses here in, in uh, Hebrew, Hebrews 12, 5 through 13 tomorrow. And I want you to really pay attention to this verse. It requires us to take heed to the discipline and chastening of the Lord. If you would like to have prayer, the prayer line is open. You need only to give us a call <clears throat> at 774-3986 and we will we will pray with you we'll pray for you that our God may strengthen your life and the life of those around you all scripture 
is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So if you need prayer, the Lord is able to do more abundant than you are asking or even in thank. Five seven one twelve forty. We'll pray with you and we'll pray for you. We had um, a outage of our uh, Facebook Live, the, the, the first part of it. Um, uh, we are thankful that we're able to get right back up um, and may the God of heaven bless you and all of those of you that have uh, been with us. Um, and may our God be with you as, as we go throughout this day. Know that our God is able and he is able to do more abundant than we are to ask or even to think. Just a reminder, coming up um, a week from today is our national jail and prison workshop. Uh, as we come, we, we need you to, to come and be with us and uh, help us to make the right plans. 571-1240. 571. Sister Marilyn Western is asking us to please continue to pray for her and her family and my mom need to have a special uh, 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 prayer for her heart. Uh, she may be able to uh, take medication to treat her congestive heart, uh, amen, amen. And uh, it can work and you can get it under control, but we do have to um, uh, be, be uh, diligent about the things that uh, we um, uh, are eating and, and the medication is so important that uh, we, we stay on that and do like uh, the doctor says. 571-1240. If you would like to, to add prayer, you give us a call. Uh, again, we're going to be having our fifth uh, Sunday Fellowship Unity uh, Day and uh, Church Fellowship Dinner following the second service. Uh, on the fifth Sunday, each month, well, in 2020, we'll be, this will be in conjunction with our 100th uh, year celebration. Praise be unto God. And uh, Midwest is blessed. We have fourth and fifth generation of family members that are uh, in our congregation. We were on our way to the office on yesterday and Brother Burns, Brother Burns said, look like you got a little shadow behind you. And uh, he was talking about Sister Marilyn, he was talking about your grandson. 
<laughs> uh, and uh, I, I told him, I said, yeah, Burns, he, he's a fifth generation uh, of um, uh, Brother um, uh, G.P. Bowser. Uh, and uh, praise be unto God. Uh, and he said, well, shucks, he, he might be the preacher coming along pretty soon. Amen. God may keep us around till Brother Mason gets up there where he can be the preacher. Who knows what God, who knows what God can do and what he will do. Praise be unto God. Let's bow. Dear God and Father, have mercy upon us. I thank you, Lord, for all that you've done and all that you continue to do. We pray that your word will help us and correct us and we not be weary in the discipline of the Lord. Help us, oh God. I pray for all of us, for we all stand in need of prayer. It is you, oh God. It is you that we need when we go through the fire that we be not consumed. When we're passing through the waters, it may get up to our neck, but it will not engulf us. Lord, because you have promised that you'll be with us in all things. And I thank you in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. I pray, amen. My time is up for today. I've enjoyed being with you and look forward to being with you if tomorrow if it's the Lord's will. Until then, know this. Our God loves you and so do we.